You good? So, so Coach, we were talking yesterday how you guys have the easiest and friendliest schedule in the league. Now, last night, of course, Memphis beats Miami, so anybody can beat anybody in this league. How mindful do you have to be of that, even when you play against other five hundred teams? It is exactly why you have to be mindful every single night you play, and that's why you have to focus on the opponent in front of you and not look ahead to what the schedule looks like. You have to take it one game at a time and make sure you're following the game plan to a T, that you're playing and doing the exact things that you know are able to make you successful throughout the game. Memphis has a few guys that are kind of like up and coming, kind of emerging kind of out of nowhere. Does that give confidence to other guys around the league where, you know, if guys who maybe weren't drafted or lower end draft guys end up playing, well, they can do the same? What it is is that they have guys taking advantage of the opportunity that they've been given. You know, guys that are out, you have injuries, and you have guys that step up right when they're asked to be called, you know, into the game. And you know what you know, Coach, Coach Jenkins is doing down there is that. He's giving guys opportunities because of injuries, but these are guys that are looking to prove and make their statement and, and uh, their names seen and heard in the league. Have you kind of said that about the, about the schedule? You want to take everything one game at a time. It's been a pretty road heavy stretch here. How do you prepare yourself for a stretch where you're not home, you're not home very often, you know, knowing eventually it'll come back around, but how do you kind of prepare, how do you kind of prepare for another long, long trip? You know, some, the road trips tend to be great bonding experiences, bonding time. You do things together as a team. You look at yourself as road warriors, trying to find a way to go into another team's gym and collect a W. Uh, so you look at it as opportunities as, as that for this team. Uh, and that's how, the way in which we approach it each and every single night. And, then, and again, you know, to Jay's point, it's, it's one game at a time, no matter where we are, you know, within that schedule. You know, they, we talked in Atlanta, Murray's game where they didn't decide the game. There were other periods in the game that ultimately led to that mm -hmm. moment. But when you're closing quarters, there have been times where you guys have been up four or five points and it's become one point or two points or you've been down or other times where you've gone up to make it 10 or 11 points. How do you approach end of quarters and what's, what's the important message that you tell your team about those end of quarter moments? You know, you try to break the game down into, into mini battles. And so, you know, you talk about winning the first quarter, winning the first three minutes. When you come out of halftime, it's like win the first four to six minutes, right? Making that team call the first time out. So it's the mini battles within the game, the game within the game that you look for. So like to your point, you know, last two minutes of the quarter, how can we win this? Whatever the score is, does not matter. You just win those two minutes of the quarter. And that's what we look for with our guys. And there's things that we can hit home on, as well as we, what we've watched on film, understanding the flow and the momentum of the game. Sometimes there's a time we have a two for one scenario. Is it the smart thing to go for it and that's at, at that time of the game? It depends on what's happening within the flow of the game. And that's what we continue to teach our guys, being able to recognize that within the game. Do you work on those scenarios and practices? Or Absolutely. You... We work on all of these things. So you've seen where we've been at end of games and we've got game winners. We've gotten the shot we've wanted, the shot we needed. When we call a timeout, when we don't call a timeout, what's the plan when we're up three versus when you're down four with a certain amount of time? If you're up four with 48 seconds left, is it necessary to go for the two for one? Probably not. But, you know, you look at the analytics, you look at the flow of the game, you look at all these things to make sure that these guys understand what's necessary within that game at that moment. What's your approach for two for one? I feel like sometimes you guys go, at, go after them, sometimes you don't. Like, how do you, is it just the flow of the game? Like, well, you know, there's a certain number we look at, and depending on if it feels like, like it's going to be rushed and it's going to speed us up, then it's not necessary to go for it. If it's an opportunity that we have time to get into our flow and we find a mismatch or a situation that we like out there, then you absolutely do go for it. But again, it always goes back to the flow of the game and what's happened in that maybe two or three minutes prior to that you want to get the best shot available. How's Gary doing? Gary's uh, still not doing contact yet, but he's doing, he's getting better. How's the rest of your team? We talked the other day about how these few days would help. What, what's your team look like overall health-wise? Everybody is, has been locked in and ready to go, and the only person that has not gone through contact has been Gary. When you, when you look at these these last two games, you know, do you feel like you were able to get what you wanted out of it as far as like kind of tightening the screws a little bit as well? You know, balancing, you know, keeping guys rested. I know it's been kind of a, mm -hmm. a little bit of a hectic, hectic schedule the last couple of weeks, but do you feel like you were able to kind of get that balance right of resting and recover, helping guys recover as well as kind of tightening the I mean, we believe so. You'll find out when we start to hit this first game if, if, every, if it all is carrying over. But I believe we've done a great job. Our coaches have done a great job. The guys have done a great job of locking in exactly what they need to do for their bodies, their minds, um, the, the, you know, just making sure they're doing the right things as we get ready to hit this road. Not that you don't welcome a, a few days off and a few days of practice, but that first game after three, day, three days between games, do you, do you, how do you feel like 
you kind of balance, or how do you how do you worry at all about kind of losing some, some sharpness or being coming out of a rusty? Well, off? we've done a, a ton of continuity stuff. You know, we've done where they're going against each other a little bit, so you balance out how much they're you know banging against each other versus you know how much you just do five on oh so there's continuity and feel and flow a big portion of us is just getting back to our basics and our fundamentals the concepts of what we do uh, more than anything both offensively and defensively